Hold up, solar can be an exciting prospect, but if you're considering it, chances are you've heard a horror story or two. You wanna hold on a sec here and watch this video first as I'll be covering five of the most costly mistakes you can make when getting solar. Hi, I'm Tom with Premier Roof Solar. I've been helping homeowners save money on their power bills for the last five years through renewable energy. Solar can be simple. Many companies and online lead generators make it seem like it's as simple as buying a pair of pants. Glossing over things though can completely ruin the experience and defeat the main reason people get solar, which is to cut costs. Money, 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 money. In this video, I'll be teaching you five mistakes you want to avoid no matter what so you can get what's best for you. First things first, you don't wanna get the wrong equipment. If you do, you won't get your money's worth. In Southern California, for the most part, the main things you wanna look at are efficiency and degradation. If you're getting tier one panels, you don't really have to worry about that. All reputable solar companies will be using tier one panels, which have the best quality components, materials, and warranties. In technical terms, you want monocrystalline instead of polycrystalline. You want maximum degradation to be less than 15% after 25 years and efficiency to be 19% or higher with manufacturer warranties of 25 years or more. What's even more important when it comes to equipment are the inverters. You absolutely do not want a string inverter alone. There are hybrid string inverters with solar optimizers that work pretty well. But but in my opinion, the best route is to go with an N-phase microinverter. I like these because they're easier and faster to replace in case something goes wrong, but they also make it easier to expand your system if you want to. Solar Edge makes a great solar optimizer with string inverters, and they're slightly lower in cost than N-phase. The only downside is if that one inverter goes down, the whole system's gonna go down. Gold Christmas lights, one bad bulb kills the whole string of lights. Though that's pretty rare with Solar Edge as well. As far as batteries, since it doesn't make sense for everyone and not everyone gets them, plus there's much to say about them, I'll have a separate video. Mistake number two, trying to do or manage everything yourself. Unless you plan on dealing with the system for the next 25 years as a part-time job or hobby, and you have direct hands-on experience with this type of project, then this is not the sort of thing you wanna DIY. You're mixing high heights on a roof with high voltage, so it's pretty dangerous. Plus, even while you'll save some money by doing everything yourself, It'll all be wasted on man hours and or equipment to get it back up and running if something goes wrong. Similar to that is getting AI or online generated quotes or designs. When you go with the cheapest guys out there that have these types of systems, they might have good equipment, but you're foregoing any customer service, tech support, and in many cases, the warranties as well, which will cost you more money than what you saved in the beginning by going cheap. It's not like there's problems left and right, but these systems last for 25 years. So something going wrong throughout those 25 to 30 years is not uncommon. And all it takes is one problem within the first few years for you to lose all of your savings if you can't get it fixed at all or you don't get it fixed quickly. So don't go cheap, which brings me to point number three, going with the wrong company, installer, or contractor. This is the most expensive mistake you can make when getting solar. If you've ever heard of someone with solar saying that it no longer works or it never worked to begin with, this is what causes that. You can overpay for solar, which doesn't feel good, but even worse is when you don't get your money's worth at all. Paying the cheapest option available is how you get a system that doesn't pay off. Anytime I hear of a quote that's around $3 or less, I bristle, cause this is not a project you wanna go cheap on. It's supposed to give you maximum savings if it lasts that 25 to 30 years. So in other words, you wanna make sure the company you're paying is gonna be in business that long so that your system lasts that long. Companies that operate at those low prices are typically not of the highest quality or experience. Plus it doesn't leave the business room to grow enough to be able to have teams in place in case they have multiple installations that need repairs. Which if you think about it, if you have dozens of systems that are lasting 25 or 30 years, you're eventually gonna encounter that and that's no big surprise. A high quality business needs enough margin to support the high quality techs, installers, foremen, designers, project managers, and customer service that you want. Always ask about the scope of work and who'll be performing it. To research any subcontractors, as well as see what experiences others have had using them. You'll also want to consider any potential complications down the road and have a clear understanding of who's responsible for the service and warranty work. Who's responsible for that is probably the most important part. Is that company positioned to be in business for the long term? I recommend going as far as making sure that the solar company is gonna be responsible for monitoring it as well. Without them monitoring it, you'll have to constantly be checking on it. At the very least, make sure there'll be an app so that you can monitor it on there. It's good to do so periodically, but you don't necessarily want an extra chore. Number four, getting the wrong payment plan. Are you in your forever home? If you are and you have the money and you're willing to, paying it all in cash could be a good choice. Rather keep your money for emergencies or use it to invest elsewhere so you can grow that money? Or are you looking to save money sooner rather than later? If the answer is yes to any of these, then paying cash may not be the best choice. 
Don't like the idea of going into debt nor parting ways with thousands of dollars? You can still cut your energy costs with solar. Or maybe you won't be able to take advantage of the solar tax credit. Even then, you can still save money on your energy with solar. Panel location and roof availability can play a role in your plan selection too. These are just a few common examples of things to consider. And number five, bad planning. This is the mistake that I made when I got solar before I was working in the industry. Whether you agree with them or not, California does have laws that could affect your future energy consumption. I never broke the law. I am the law. At the end of the day, we can't predict the future, but you should know that most homeowners that get solar end up using more electricity than before since they are saving money on that electricity. Getting at least an extra 15 to 20% will protect you from most, if not all, future usage increases and should still cost you less than what you're paying right now. If you want to know my full experience of getting solar before I was working in the industry and then going on the inside, I will have a video detailing that. So remember to like and subscribe so that you can be alerted. If you're considering solar right now, you can get the solar cheat sheet by clicking the link below.